is going on, Hobby Family? It is your boy, K-Dub, and this is K-Dub's High Five. Five rapid-fire questions with your favorite hobby faces, and today, it's one of the Twitter hobby favorites. Voted the number one Nationals fan on Twitter. <laughs> Fans, he does not work for PSA, and he hates the wave. Please welcome my dude, JB, at Old Town Cards on Twitter. How are you doing today, my friend? Good, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, man, I appreciate you joining me. Uh, how this works is I got five questions, all hobby related. I'm going to throw them at you one right after another. You ready to take on the high five? I am. Let's do it. All right, man. Your Twitter, ha Twitter handle is at Old Town Cars. How did you land on that for your username on Twitter? Yeah. So when I started my hobby account, I lived in Old Town, Alexandria, which is a place okay. right outside of DC. Uh, it's like been around since like, the 1700s like they've got little blocks and corners where george washington literally used to like go grab a beer okay. um, so it's just like one of my favorite places in the world i've lived there two separate times unfortunately i uh i moved out and i bought a house uh much to my wife's uh chagrin if you will <laughs> uh you know she she loves the city um but we got two big dogs um so lived there with her for a couple of years and uh now we live at I'm like eight minutes away. I was there on Saturday. Still love going there. So that is uh, where I came out up with it. It had nothing to do with the song Old Town Road, but okay. I created, so I created the handle and then Old Town Road came out. And I think it like kind of helped with like people seeing my, <laughs> my name and like associating it with yeah. something, which was kind of funny. Um, but no, one has nothing to do with the other. All right. We well, might have to send a little bit of a, of a uh, gratuity to what's his name? Little Nas yeah. At some point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, right on, man. Well, Hey, uh, second question, when it comes to your hobby journey, your own personal hobby journey, uh, who would you say have been some of your biggest influences? Yeah. So I'm going to start with the guy who really got me into this like point blank. So he's on, uh, he's on Twitter at cherry tree cards. Okay. Um, his, his name's Josh It's JJ on there. Um, but he started just sending pictures of cards in like our fantasy baseball chat in like 2018. Uh, it started heavy in 2018 because of Ronald Acuna jr. Yeah. And so he was buying hobby boxes of 2018 update, uh, and sharing and talking about, he like always was talking about prospects. It started with him with Bowman in like 2016 and he collected yeah. a lot as a kid. Um, you know, I, I, I collected cards as a kid, hadn't been into it for, you know, 20 years and it just started to catch my eye. And so I started talking to him and he very early on was a grader was like someone who would grade a lot with PSA. Yeah. Um, and that's why I think this whole stigma happened or whatever is because I just followed his lead. Um, yeah. and so we got, you know, I, I got very lucky and I was actually talking to a couple of people, uh, today, just in a group chat, uh, like a hobby group chat that I'm in, um, that, yeah, I mean, like I got really lucky that the guy that I kind of followed into the hobby, uh, a ripped a lot of wax and B graded with PSA. So when I started following his lead in like 2018 and I was actually chasing Ronald Acuna jr. Um, just so happens that in the same boxes, there was this other guy, Juan Soto, who was this Nationals prospect who yep. came on late at the end of the year. And so I was like, oh, OK, well, I was opening for Acuna, but I'm pulling the, this Nationals player. Maybe I'll just collect him. Um, and then simultaneously, we're ripping all this wax, getting all these great young players in 2018 and then in 2019 with Tatis and Vlad and stuff. Um, and doing all this kind of together. And then we're also grading with PSA. So when the boom happened, I was very lucky that the person I followed into this brought me along the ride with PSA. And yeah. so I was getting cards back in bulk at like $8 a card Wow! during the boom. And that was, I mean, it made it very, you know, it made it very fortunate for me to be able to collect the things that I like, which are, you know, Juan Soto cards, which are not cheap because yeah. I was able to get in early. And I think that's important for everybody to know, man, like we're not all out here just like flush with cash. Like, different people had different journeys and yeah, yep. man, like I can sell some stuff that I didn't put a lot of money into to then buy something that I have on my, you know, like my, my eye on. So, you know, I, I got to give a shout out to cherry tree cars, man. He really took me on this journey and like formulated a lot of what I was doing. And then he only did eBay stuff. I ventured onto Twitter 
Uh, he told me I was going to get scammed and I told him to shut up and I just went on to Twitter. Um, and then he followed me onto Twitter. So it was kind of a cool, like give and take where, uh, we both helped each other out a little bit. Heck yeah, man. I love that story. I love the story of he pushed you and you pushed him and here we are. So yeah, beautiful, man. Uh, all right, let's talk about the cards. Uh, I know your boy is Soto. Um, but do you have a card out there that is, that is your grail card? your favorite card, the card you've always wanted, or maybe you do have it and it will never leave your collection. Well, yeah. So there are two Sotos that are my grail cards. I have one and I don't have the other. The one that I have is the the Bowman first auto. Uh, Soto did not have uh, a Bowman first base. Um, So you can only get his Bowman first in an auto and it is not cheap. And so (laughs) I sold a lot of cards over an extended period of time to be able to get that card. It was between that and the Soto Gatorade bath. Um, They were about the same price at the time. They're not the same price now. And I did bet on the wrong horse. Uh, I I wish I had gotten the the Gatorade bath, which is now about uh, like a $10,000 card and the, um, the, and nothing to, the, you know, nothing to be ashamed about. I mean, yeah. the Bowman first is like that I have in a PSA 10 is like a $7,000 card. Um, but still like a $3,000 difference. Uh, if you were going to bet on one, it's not a small <laughs> amount of money. Um, when I do get that Gatorade bath card, I don't know. I don't plan on spending $10,000 on a card anytime soon. Yeah. Um, I have a collection I'm very proud of. Um, so there's no need for me to go shell out 10 G's on something that'll make my collection yeah. better but not like going to change my life. Um, so that'll be probably an acquisition for another day down the line when I hit the lottery <laughs> or something. Oh, or if I hit the lottery, man, it's yours. If I hit the lottery. Yeah, there we go. All right. Well, this let's talk about recorded. product. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know how much product you rip, um, but is there a product that is your favorite, you know, money, not an option. You can rip any product you want. Um, is there a product that you would choose and why would you choose it? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, there's a theme here, right? <laughs> um, so I got into this hobby ripping 2018 update, um, chasing Acuna and Soto. And it was, it was the most fun time that I've ever had collecting, especially because there's so many rookies in there. Uh, there's like three, three or four inserts of Soto, three or, three or four inserts of Acuna. And then they have base cards and then they have short prints. And it was just, such a fun thing to rip and it only stayed affordable for a short period of time as I got into collecting. So I really have only opened, but so much of it. Like I remember like my first really fun rip of that. Like I got eight hangers off of walmart.com back when like getting good product on like a website, you know, retail website was actually possible. Um, And then pretty quickly after that, it went up. And then like where I really ripped a lot of wax was 2019 series two with Tatis and Vlad and those guys. But yeah, I mean, and I talked about cherry tree cards earlier. I mean, he ripped like three to four cases of 2018 update. And that's basically what he was rubbing in my face while, uh, (laughs) while I was like still sniffing around and seeing if this was something that I wanted to do. Um, So I think if I could, if I could rip any product, it would be that it's just there it's so fun to chase those guys. They're so talented and young and they're in the same division and just the best product in my opinion. I love it. I love it. All right, man. Last question. I alluded to at the intro. You do not work for PSA. All right. Let's just put that out there. Friends does not work for (laughs) PSA. Um, But I think you are one of the go-to guys when it comes to grading conversations. Um, How do you feel like grading has kind of impacted the hobby these last couple of years during this boom that we've been having. Yeah. I mean, I think it, I think it impacted it a lot. I know that grading is highly subjective. I don't necessarily agree with everything when it comes to grading. Um, But I also know like it's one of those things where you can fight against it all you want, but reality is reality for me. Mm -hmm. The things that stay in my collection, I try to have graded. Um, You know, I think that, it protects them long-term as you see, I like the dent, you know, kind of like stand, put them on stands. You can have things in one touches. Um, and, and it's all personal preference. That's the preference for me because in five, 10 years, whatever, you know, they're kept in a sonically sealed case, uh, as they say. So, 
Um, I mean, I think it's, I think it's impacted it tremendously. I thought, I think also the money um, that grading has really brought to uh, cards has also created a lot of vitriol, as I'm sure you've seen. Um, if you question something that someone is financially invested in um, or financially on the hook for whatever words you want to use, um, it also brings with it uh, a lot of, you know, anger, frustration. And, and things like that. So I think there's the positives and negatives to everything. And when it comes to grading, I mean, for your own wallet, I would want to get my more expensive cards slabbed up um, for when I open my mouth. Sometimes I wish I would do it a little bit less. So, um, you know, I think, I think there's the, the good and the bad to, to it when you, uh, when you look at grading. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, man. I got one bonus question and you and I could not be more opposite on this debate. Why do you hate the wave? <laughs> well, I hate the wave because in baseball, every time, I mean, I, I swear it's like 80% of the time a team starts doing the wave. The, if you're the home team and you start doing the wave, it shows the away team that your fans do not care about the game. And so it's a psychological thing. And uh -huh. you, you're standing there and you're like, oh, look, you guys are beating us and your fans don't even care. They're busy playing around in the stands yeah. and you see it. It inspires these guys on the field and comebacks happen all the time. The amount of people who have tweeted at me and said the wave just started. And then I follow up with it like <laughs> 20 minutes later and the score has flipped and the other team has taken the lead. I mean, I got to say like at least a dozen times it's happened. Right. Um, it's just a thing in baseball. I know it started in football, but baseball is like a sport of tradition Yep. And the wave is not done in baseball. The wave is like a football thing. Football games are crazy. You throw beach balls. You do all that stuff. Baseball is not that way. You go to baseball. You write in your scorecard. I know I'm sounding like a super old man right now, and that's fine. But I just don't believe you should do the wave in baseball. And I think that you should support your team, and you should root, and that should be that. But I know, I'm, I know that probably 50% 50, 50 of people agree with me, and 50% of people think I hate fun, and that's fine. I won't say I'm a, I'm a believer in your side, man, but I will say that is, that is more than I've ever thought about the wave before. So, well, if uh, I'm going to put it on my bio as hashtag ban the wave, I got to have like rationale I, behind gotta it. Got to have some firepower. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right, man. That's all I got. We got a high five at the end of the high five. So slap it up. I appreciate you so much joining me, my friend. Um, it, it was a true pleasure talking with you, man. Yeah, absolutely. And we have one thing um, before we go. Uh, I did give away uh, one of the coolest cards that was in that I think was in my collection. It's okay. It's not a very expensive card, so I can always get it back. Um, and it ended up going for $35. Um, let me real quick pull up who won it. Give me one second. It was um, at Nat's Realist. Uh, donated $35 for a card that's probably like 15 bucks. So that was extremely nice. I said I would match um, whatever that came out to. So $70 and I will send that to whatever. Uh, and I said, uh, whatever, um, charity you want me to send it to. So, uh, fire away, man. Okay. Well, appreciate it, man. That is fantastic. And a first for the high five here. Um, but a lot of the people who watch this, no gold line cards, uh, does his, uh, monthly, uh, fundraiser for the special Olympics polar plunge. I want to see that dude hit 5k. So it would be awesome if that got sent over to him to, uh, help him in his journey to get wet and cold this month. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. We'll make it happen. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you joining me. You guys can follow JB on Twitter at old town cards. Now you know why uh, you could also follow me if you're bored at Mr. K dub, just a reminder, each and every one of you be the good in the world. JB, thanks so much for joining and uh, we'll see y'all next time on the next high five. This is a demo sound of freeintromusic.com.